Hey guys, uh, so glad to get together for our week seven of God Time. Uh, and as we are getting closer and closer to the end of this course and end of this time together, we just want to continue to focus in on the things that will make us make the most impact in our God time. And in one of the areas that can be such a area of success and such an area of hardship um, in our own God time is prayer. I think we all, as followers of Christ, know that talking um, to God and having that conversation is important. However, many times as we go through this prayer, we have a tendency to focus on just one avenue of prayer. And if you look at the Lord's Prayer and the way Jesus described prayer for us, it's not just one facet. Many times we just go to intercessory prayer where we're praying for people, for issues, for um, hardships in our lives that we want to overcome. And there's an acronym that I learned in high school um, from my youth pastor that just really helped me to, to think through the process of prayer. Um, and I just want to kind of intro with this to think a little bit differently uh, as we lead into Josh's teaching. And that is first to praise, it, it's, the acronym is PRAY. So to praise the Lord, to repent, to ask, and to yield. So many times we focus on the asking. We focus on uh, the repent or the idea of asking or intercessory prayer for other people. We don't spend time praising the Lord for what he has done. We don't spend time repenting for areas that we have uh, fallen short or, or quite in, honestly sinned in our lives. Uh, we don't yield. Uh, and yielding is that conversation, is that receiving and, and being willing to hear from the Lord and put it into our practice and our lives. So as we uh, enter into uh, Josh's teaching of, of what it means to pray and have that conversation of God, I just want to start your mind processing um, that it can be so much more than just intercessory, but it can be a conversation and a relationship. And the acronym of PRAY uh, may be helpful for you. Hey, thanks for the intro, Todd. Uh, the acronym prayer can be a powerful tool in your toolbox to add value to your prayer life. Um, I found everything in my life, in the spiritual life, has grown through a conversational relationship with Jesus. Uh, prayer for me was kind of, uh, for those ultra spiritual people, I would say, for a lot of my life, or I just didn't make time for it, or it felt like work. But I think what was the biggest game changer in my prayer life is learning that it's a conversational relationship with God. Sometimes I listen to God and I don't hear anything. And sometimes I hear from God and I just, I sense something. Like hearing, I've never, only once in my life, I'll say it one time, one time in my life, I heard the audible voice of God. And that's kind of a long story. Maybe I'll share it some other time. Uh, I was 24 and uh, it was powerful. and. It had to do with uh, me going back and saying goodbye to my grandmother. God told me to go say goodbye to her because I didn't know that she was going to die that day. And um, I did it because God told me to. I was driving. God says, go back and tell her you love her and say goodbye. And she died later that day. And it was the audible voice of God. Every other time I've heard from God, it has just been me being quiet or sometimes even in my dreams. Uh, I'll just get a sense about something in my spirit and it's not an audible voice but it's it's more powerful than a thought it's something that just you know it resonates with your heart and you know it's something other than you uh, it's a voice outside yourself it's God talking through the Holy Spirit but I've had to train myself over years now of, of learning to decipher what's God's voice and what's just my mind or what's the world talking but sometimes the enemy speaks to us too so the question is how do we grow in our prayer life but how do we hear from God in our prayer life. Listening prayer is so powerful. Creating space where you're quiet before God, you ask him questions and you hear from him. So I just want to go to a few scriptures now and just talk about this idea. But remember in the beginning it was the voice of God. God spoke the universe into existence. It was the voice of Jesus talking that created the universe. In Revelation it says in the final battle Jesus will come riding in on his white horse and he will approach the, the enemy and his armies, and it says the sword that proceeds from his mouth will destroy the enemy. The words of Jesus on the battlefield will destroy Satan and his armies. That's what it says in Revelation. The words of God have power, 
And almost every major character, you go through the Bible, every major character in the Bible heard from God in some way. Uh, Moses heard God through the burning bush. Talk to God privately as, as God would talk to a friend in the tabernacle. Joshua heard from God. Uh, Joseph heard from God in dreams. Abraham heard from God. David was a man after God's own heart that heard from the Lord in his quiet time. New Testament, Paul didn't just hear God on the Damascus Road. He had visions. Isaiah heard from God in a vision. People heard from God. So there's many, many ways you can hear from God. Dreams. Uh, the primary way you can hear from God is through the Word. That's the primary way that God has spoken to His people. So whatever God speaks into your life, through a dream, a still small voice, uh, through other Christians, it can never contradict the Word of God. It will always line up with God's Word. But God's Word will not speak to us about where we're supposed to get a job or about who we're supposed to date. There's circumstances in our life, life where we need a specific Word from the Lord and it, it, you can't be found in Scripture because it's personal to us. But the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us in our prayer time to give direction and wisdom. And I want to give two verses about that because God is still speaking. He's still speaking to His people and He wants to speak to you and open up your spiritual ears to hear His voice. So one of the things I really want to encourage you with before I show you the two Scriptures is there are, there are whole theological bents and I won't get into that because I don't want to criticize anyone, but the whole groups of, of Christianity in America today that do not believe that people can hear from God personally, they would say that the only way you can hear from God is through the Word. That is the primary way you hear from God, but God still speaks to individual Christians in individual ways to bring life and blessing and truth. So I just want to break off the lie right now that you personally can't hear from God. God wants to speak to you, he wants to give you personal words of encouragement and love, and He wants to give you direction. I want to talk two verses about that. So if you have your Bible, open to uh, John 10, uh, and it talks early in that passage that God, through Jesus, wants to give us an abundant life. The, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full, the abundant life. But later on in that passage in, 10, in chapter 10 of John, in verse 27, he says, my sheep listen to my voice. Let me find that passage again. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So it goes from talking about abundant life to listening to God's voice. And that is actually the key to walking in a life of freedom and victory and abundance is to follow God's leading through the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus says it again in John 16. Listen to this. This is amazing. God is speaking, and He wants to speak to you. John chapter 16, Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit. It says in verse 13, listen to this, John 16, 13, When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on His own, but He will tell you what He has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you Whatever he receives from me, all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. So in that passage, there's a lot of terminology about the Trinity, the Father, the Spirit, and Jesus working together. And there's three or four phrases that talk about God talking to his disciples, which is you and me. It's not just for them. That would be a cruel way to look at God to say that, He's going to send the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. He's going to come and live and dwell and make us His temple. But within the temple of you and I, He will not speak. He will only send His Word. He has sent the Word. He has sent the Word through Jesus. And the Word will guide us. But God wants to talk to you personally. So the question is, how do we open ourselves up to hearing the Word of the Lord? And I would say, there's two things in my life that really helped. One is I created space, which you're doing through your God time. Prayer is about asking God for things. We'll go back to the acronym of pray. Uh, it's a lot more than just asking. It's repenting, all these things. But it's also listening prayer. So I've created space in my life where I just ask God questions and I wait for His voice. The other thing that attracts the presence and the voice of God is humility. Humility is the number one virtue of a Christian. 
It is, uh, it's like a magnetic force that, force that attracts the presence of God. Look at James chapter 4. Humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, he will flee from you. If you draw close to me, I will draw close to you. And the first ingredient for that is humility. Uh, a non-focus on self. Pride is self-focus. Humility is focus on God, on others. So when you live in humility, and you know, it doesn't mean you hate yourself. It means that you have yourself in right perspective with God. Humility will draw the voice and the presence of God. So if you create space in your life this week and just ask God some personal questions or just wait for Him, you got to train yourself to trust the voice of the Lord. Maybe ask some other people, say, I felt this thing from God. I, I sensed a word from the Lord. What do you think about it? Talk to a pastor. Message me or Todd privately and say, I heard this from God. What do you think? But start asking God questions, creating space, because I promise you in your prayer life, He wants to talk to you personally. He wants to encourage you and love you through His voice. And there is nothing greater in the Christian life than having a conversational relationship with God. It's available to us. He promises us in Scripture. It's available. All we have to do is be open to it because He wants to speak. I love you guys, and I hope that God is just, uh, He's wanting to talk, and I hope this helps you create space in your life to listen for His voice.